I'm Zanuri Silva and welcome to Snail White's The Glow Network, their very first online beauty summit. If it's your first time joining us here today, well, The Glow Network is basically a series of skincare talks, beauty lessons, and live Q&As all happening throughout the month of June. And for today's talk entitled, Bust That Myth, we have dermatologist Dr. Gail Robredo with us. I'm Dr. Gail Robredo Vitas and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I've been in practice for seven years now and apart from holding private clinics in two locations, I enjoy giving lectures both here and abroad and I've recently launched my own YouTube channel where I give expert advice and talk about anything and everything about the skin. I am here now because I invite ako to talk about skincare myths and I'm going to debunk and shed some light on five of the most popular ones para naman lahat tayo well informed and we can take better care of our skin. You would be surprised because ang dami daming skincare myths going around, especially online. And they usually start with one or a few experiences na positive about an ingredient, a product, or a skincare routine that are then believed to be true. Pero sa totoo lang, these claims often lack sound evidence and might sometimes even be untrue, hence are considered myths. Myth number one, oily skin doesn't need moisturizer. One of my first videos was actually about moisturizers kasi madami talagang misconceptions about them. And I wanted to explain what moisturizers are, what they do, and how everyone can benefit from them provided you use one that specially suits your skin and your needs. Everyone does cleansing. Lahat tayo naghugas at naglilinis ng mukha. Whether it's coming back from school, from the gym, or coming home from work, Lahat tayo either naliligo or naghugas na mukha or we do both. Cleansing is a very important process that removes all the dirt, the germs, and the impurities we have on our skin. In the past, karamihan ng mga cleansers are made from harsh surfactants that could not distinguish between dirt and sebum versus our much-needed fatty acids and lipids and they remove everything efficiently, leaving our skin vulnerable and dry. Moisturizers were originally developed para ibalik yung mga natanggal na fatty acids and lipids when you clean your skin. However, with better understanding of the skin and technological advances sa paggawa ng mga cleansers, gentler and milder cleansers are now being produced that efficiently remove all the dirt, the sebum, and the oil from our skin while still keeping it protected and hydrated. And so, newer, more modern moisturizers not only make our skin smooth, they have also evolved into vehicles that deliver active ingredients into our skin. In the field of dermatology and especially in my practice, sobrang important ang moisturizers in improving my patient's quality of life. Maraming formulations ng moisturizers in the market. You have your creams, which are ideal to apply on the face and on individuals with dry skin. There are gel-based ones that are non-oily and non-comedogenic, which I recommend for patients with oily and acne-prone skin. And of course, you have your serums, which contain high concentration of ingredients that have a specific target or specific purpose. And then, there are even more ingredients that are designed to address so many different concerns and needs. For example, you have your antioxidants such as your vitamin A, your vitamin C, and your vitamin E. You have your exfoliants like your alpha hydroxy acids and your beta hydroxy acids, your anti-inflammatories such as your niacinamide, and your skin hydrators such as your hyaluronic acid. Just remember that using the wrong type of moisturizer for your skin, just like with any other product, will most likely do more harm than good. An ideal moisturizer for you is one that you are willing to use regularly, one that best suits your taste and preferences, and one that will give you your desired treatment effects. Myth number two. Toners that are drying are the most effective. Originally, toners were meant to remove leftover dirt, oil, sebum, and bacteria after cleaning our skin. And often, these toners contain alcohol, which is indeed very effective in removing oil and killing bacteria, kaya lang they can be irritating, they can be drying, they disrupt our skin's microflora, and removes all kinds of oils, even the good ones, that keep our skin barrier intact. 
Ngayon, when your skin barrier is compromised or disrupted, you now become more prone to irritation, you become more sensitive, and you can break out easily. Speaking of alcohols in your skincare products, not all of them are bad, ha? The ones that you want to avoid are the drying types, such as your SD alcohol, your denatured alcohol, and less often, your isopropyl alcohol. But just as there are bad ones, meron din naman good ones, and we call them fatty alcohols, and these are non-irritating, and they act as emollients to moisturize and protect your skin. Common good alcohols are your seteril, steril, cetyl, and behenyl alcohol. Nowadays, our toners are meant to do so much more. They restore our skin's natural pH balance, which is acidic. They provide additional cleansing by removing the last traces of your dirt and impurities from your skin, making penetration of your skincare products more efficient. They deliver essential ingredients that our skin needs. And depending on the contents or active ingredients of your toner, it can hydrate, moisturize or exfoliate your skin without stripping it of its natural moisture. Personally, because I have dry to combination skin, I prefer toners that contain alpha hydroxy acids or beta hydroxy acids and moisturizers like hyaluronic acid and tanthenol. If you are more on the oily acne prone side or if you have large pores, ingredients like your salicylic acid or witch hazel, which is a natural um, oil absorber will help unclog your pores. Just be careful not to overuse them as it can lead to compensation and an overproduction of oil in our skin. And if you have sensitive skin, go for toners that contain antioxidants or ingredients with anti-inflammatory and soothing properties such as your niacinamide. My overall advice is to go for alcohol-free toners that are appropriate for your skin type and address your skin's main issues. Myth number three, you don't need sunscreen when you're indoors or when it's cloudy. Sunscreen use is something that I talk about all the time and you will probably hear me say something about wearing sunscreens in all of my YouTube videos. Let me start by giving you two important reasons why we should be wearing sunscreens. Prolonged exposure to UV radiation, especially between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., puts us at risk for developing skin cancers and contributes to what we call photoaging. So photoaging is what you see as fine lines, wrinkles, lackluster skin, and hyperpigmentation. I say UV radiation because even if it's gloomy outside or it's overcast or walang araw, 80% of UV radiation can still penetrate our skin. What's more, even when you're indoors, some of these rays are able to penetrate window glass. There are two kinds of UV radiation primarily responsible for causing skin damage, your UVA and your UVP. UVA is the aging ray and it causes wrinkles and age spots. UVB, on the other hand, is the burning ray and this is the one that causes sunburns and can darken your skin. UVB rays are shorter and cannot penetrate through window glass, pero UVA can and it penetrates deeper into our skin. So you are not entirely protected even if you're indoors. And let us not forget our high energy visible light or what is better known as blue light, which is emitted from our cell phones, our tablets, and computer screens. Blue light is said to penetrate deeper into our skin more than UVA. And although not as strong, constant and prolonged exposure to it can also lead to hyperpigmentation and wrinkles. Now you know kung bakit kailangan pa rin natin mag ng sunscreen even when we're indoors or on cloudy days. Now that we have that out of the way, what should one be looking for when choosing his or her sunscreen? We dermatologists recommend that you look for something that is broad spectrum with an SPF of at least 30 or a PA rating of plus 2 if available to apply enough sunscreen to cover all exposed areas of the body including yung mga lagi nakakalimutan like your ears, the back of your neck, and even your lips and to reapply every 2-3 to three hours or as needed even when indoors. Also remember that there are other ways of protecting yourselves from UV radiation. And this includes wearing protective clothing or seeking shade. Myth number four, your skin is supposed to feel squeaky clean and tight after you cleanse. This is a very common misconception and I must admit that 
even I grew up believing it to be true that the feeling of tightness or that squeaky clean feel is necessary to ensure a clean skin. I'm sure we all agree that proper hygiene and cleansing is very important as it prevents buildup of dead skin cells, it removes all the oil, the dirt, the debris, and even microbes na kapag naipon can lead to clogged pores, blackheads, whiteheads, and even breakouts. But equally important is preserving our skin's protective barrier made up of ceramides and natural lipids by using gentle cleansers. Harsh cleansers strip your skin of its essential lipids, which in turn can weaken your skin barrier, making you prone to irritation, sensitivity, acne breakout, and even dehydration. So instead of reaching out for that strong and drying cleanser, switch to hydrating gentle cleanser instead. Now we go to our final myth, our myth number five. Skincare products or routines should hurt in order for them to work. Kumbaga, no pain, no gain. There are still those who believe that when they don't feel any pain, such as your stain or burning sensation, when they try out a new product or procedure, that it's not effective. That is simply not the case. I mean, sure, there are some ingredients like your alpha-hydroxy acids or your beta-hydroxy acids that give you that slight tingling sensation after you apply them, but it usually goes away after a few minutes. Prolonged redness, itchiness, and burning sensations are actually red flags for me. And if you experience any of these with any of the skincare products that you're using, you should immediately stop using them because they can actually damage your skin. Also, too much of a good thing can be bad. So don't overdo any of your skin steps. Don't over cleanse, don't over exfoliate, and don't apply too much of a product or an ingredient on your skin. Keep in mind that taking good care of your skin should never be an unpleasant experience. So there you have it. Top 5 skincare myths debunked because following and believing them can actually do you harm and may keep you from having great skin. Remember that we are all different. Iba-iba tayo ng skin type, ng genes, ng exposures, and what might work for me might not work for you and vice versa. And like I always say in all of my videos, when in doubt, do not hesitate to consult your dermatologist. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in and I hope you learned something from me today. If you have any skincare beliefs that you want to clarify or to check whether they're true or not, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. I will go through each and every one of them and will try to answer all your questions in the upcoming Q&A with Snail White. Bye! Thank you guys for watching! Wow, I learned a lot! What about you guys? If you have any questions or clarifications about specific skincare tips or products, then feel free to comment them below this video so that Dr. Gail can check them and answer them during her upcoming live Q&A with Snail White happening on June 26 at 4 p.m. She had the Snail White Moisture Facial Cream, the CC Sunscreen, and of course, the brand new Glow Potion AHA BHA Toner. And since it's alcohol-free, it does not stain or irritate the skin, rather it exfoliates, smoothens, brightens, and hydrates your skin. It's really awesome guys, plus it's affordable too. I've tried it myself and I feel like it's one of my holy grail products right now. And I think my skin has been glowing much more ever since I used it. <laughs> anyway, once again, thank you for joining me and Dr. Gail today. We hope you had fun. See you all again online during her live Q&A session. Also, we hope that you do not miss our final skincare talk happening on June 27, which will be all about facial massages, which you can do at home to maintain tighter and plumper skin. All right, see you all there, but for now, goodbye.